please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the 2019 mathematics questionnaire of the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or max scholarships for the specialized training category. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Problem 3. On the plane XY, there are two straight lights, 1 and 2, two parabolas, 3 and 4, and a circle 5, as shown in the lower figure. Choose the correct equation from 1 to 15 to satisfy each graph and fill in the blanks with the number. First, let us find the equations of the two lines, this one and this one. Let us recall that the equation of a line is like this. This is the standard form. We notice that the x and the, w and the y have exponents that are equal to 1, and we have coefficients here. We also know that if the line increases from left to right, then the product or the quotient of a and b here is negative. And if it decreases from left to right, then the quotient or the product of a and b must be positive. So the first step would be to just, to just eliminate those that are not lines. So let's look for those equations with this form. These are all those equations with this form. Now we notice that line 1 and line 2, both of them are actually increasing from left to right. That means that the product or the quotient of the coefficient of x and the coefficient of y must be negative, meaning they have to have different signs. So let us eliminate those choices that have the same signs, the coefficient of x and the coefficient of y. So let's start from here. Now this is 1 and 3. Both are positive, so we eliminate that. Let's move here. This one is 4 and negative, so that's fine. Let's think about that later. Here, this also fine. This one, they're both positive, so we eliminate. Among these remaining 4, one of those lines must go through 0, 2, and another one must go, to, go through 2, 0. So let's try to plug in those coordinates and find which one satisfies line 2 and the other, this line 1. So let's try 0, 2 and 2, 0 for each. So for this one, if we try 0, 2, so we plug in 0 for x and 2 for y. So 0 times 4 is 0, and y equals 2 here, so negative 2 minus 4, it's negative 6, that's not equal to 0. So this one is not one of the lines that we're looking for, it's not number 2. Now let's try 2, 0 on that. If we do 2 here, so 4 times 2 is 8, y will be 0, so 8 minus 4 is 4. So, 4 is not equal to 0. So, again, that line is not this other line that we're looking for. So, number 2 is not an answer. Then let's do that same procedure for choice number 5. Let's start with 0, 2. So, we plug in 0 on the x. And then, so this becomes 0. And then 2 on the y. So, negative 3 times 2 is 6. Rather, minus 6 plus 6 is 0. And that is the same as, as the number on the right side. So we keep that. And then let's check another one in here. Let's start with 0, 2. 0, 2 would be 0 here, and then 2 here. Negative 2 minus 4 minus 6. So this is not a candidate for line 1, or rather line 2. It's not a candidate for line 2. Let's check if it's a candidate for line 1. Let's do 2, 0. So 2 here and 0 here. So 2 times 2 is 4 minus 4, 0. So this looks like it's a candidate for line 2. So remember, this is a candidate for, or rather, line 1. So this one is candidate for line 2. This one a candidate for line 1. Now let's check for, 
let's check this one if it's a candidate for either because if it's not a candidate for either line one or line two then that means that our line one and line two are these two choices so let's do two zero uh, zero two so if we put zero on the x then we put two here minus six minus six that's minus 12 so this is not a candidate for line two is it a candidate for line one let's do two zero if we put two here and zero here so two minus six is minus four again that's not zero on the other side therefore this is not a candidate for line line one nor line two so finally this will be our line two this will be our line one now let's think about the parabolas number three and number four so if a parabola opens upward or downwards then its equation will be like this this will be the standard form there will be an x squared and then there's another x here and then you have a y you don't have a y squared for a parabola that opens upward or downward now if the parabola opens upwards then the sign of a and b must be different that means if you get the quotient or the product of a and b here you have to get a negative number and if it opens downwards then the quotient or the product of a and b must be positive that means that the sign of a and b must be the same so the first step is just to just to select those that are parabolas so those that have this form so from the choices these are the equations of parabolas which are of these form now let's try to first look for number three that means that we are looking for a parabola that opens upward and so the sign of a and b must be different so let's have a look at the choices for for this one this is a candidate because the sign of 5 and minus 30 are different number 10 is not a choice number 13 is number 8 is number 6 no number 15 no now we just have to plug in what we know about this parabola that it goes through 0 2 so if we put 0 2 in here we see that's 0 for x so this vanishes and this also vanishes and you have 2 so you have minus 60 plus 60 that's 0 and so that still remains there and for this one you do 0 here 0 here again you get minus 30 times 2 which is minus 60 plus 60 again that's 0 so again this is a choice for this one we have 0 0 for x 0 here and then 2 for y so minus 30 times 2 is minus 60 minus 60 it's minus 120 and that's different from the right hand side so this one is not is not a viable option for the parabola 3. So we are left with choice 4 and choice 13. The only difference is the sign of 8x. Here it's negative, here it's positive. The sign of 8x, the sign of the coefficient of the x term in a parabola that opens either upward or downward actually indicates the location of the vertex if it's negative that means that the vertex is in the it's it's either in the first quadrant or in the fourth quadrant that's if it's negative if it's positive that means that the vertex is either on the second quadrant or on the fourth quadrant and in this case the vertex of this parabola 3 is actually on the first quadrant so that 8x must be negative and so we know that this is our parabola 3 now if we go on to think about parabola 4 we will go through the same steps so first let's eliminate 
some options that do not go through this um, this point here, which is two zero. So if we start with this choice, if we put two here, that's four. This goes to zero, and if you put two here, that's minus eight, and it's minus four. So this is not zero. So this is gone from the options. Then we try choice six. Again, we put two for x and zero for y. So here we have four, here we have eight, and they're all positive here actually. So it looks like it's not gonna be zero, which is on the right side. And so we eliminate this from our options and we are left with just one option. And if you actually check two, four, y is zero. So this is gone, so four minus four times two is eight so minus four plus four that's zero so that checks out this is our parabola of four now let's look for circle five now among the graphs here only the circle is actually easily determined from the given it's uniquely determined from the given the given is that it is tangent to this point zero two and to this point to zero. That means that if you draw a perpendicular line here, it should go through the center. And the same is true if you draw a perpendicular line here. It should also go through the center of the circle. So the center of the circle is actually 2, 2. And if we know the center of the circle, then we can actually write the equation of the circle if we also know the radius. In this drawing, we know the radius because from here to the center is 2, so the radius is 2. And so if we write down the equation of a circle with the center of 2, 2 and the radius of 4, that would be this. x minus the x-coordinate of the center squared plus y minus the y-coordinate of the center squared equals the radius squared. And now we just have to simplify this. And if we if we do the squaring, and we do the squaring here, and we combine the constants, this is what we get, which is choice seven. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya.